That building is the, or the mast is what's known as the Crystal Palace, which uh, was originally a BBC mast. And it's a lovely day over here in Penge East, a bit further out south uh, London than Brixton. And uh, come over today because I've been over here for ages, so I used to work over here. And there's um, Crystal Palace Park where they've got some dinosaurs, uh, like artificial dinosaurs from 19th century, and also uh, the original Crystal Palace. So uh, we're on our way there now, and I um, hope you enjoy it. There's parrots are everywhere. Beautiful Tudor, um, Victorian house that. Just notice the high chimneys up there. So that used to be one of the main transmitters for uh, South London. I think it was opened in the 20s when it uh, started BBC TV and radio. And um, whether it serves any purpose now, I'm not sure. It's all gone digital. And um, I think they've just left it there as a relic from the past. But without those transmitters in those days, we wouldn't have had any TV or radio. Now we're entering Crystal Palace Park, where there's also uh, a famous uh, racetrack, athletics track. It's quite busy here today. Very leafy around here. I always remember it being very, very leafy. And uh, it's like something out of the Munsters. It's quite a while since I've been here, so it's nice to come over here and uh, see how the place has changed, if at all. So here it is, uh, Crystal Palace Park, the one and only, and. Uh, Looks like they've got a bit of a market on here today. I bet you don't know all sides. I bet if I went in there, I'd find all sides. Some nice cheeses. You name it, they've got it, especially cheese. Can you love that? It's what's commonly known as Scotch eggs. I don't know what they call them, Scotch eggs. Basically sausage with egg inside. Do vegetarian ones, got an incredible range of vegetarian and vegan food in the UK now. It seems to be really taking on. Yeah. Darth Tish Ting. Fish tacos. Yeah. You can do your, uh, do your weekly shop here if you want. Hiya, how's business? Business okay? <laughs> we'll be, we'll be back. <laughs> My friend was just telling me they used to do uh, Formula One, Formula Two here, racing. But you got a small circuit there. See those little cars? Cute. And they're coming in now to the pit stop. All all running electric apparently.
the famous uh, Crystal Palace athletic track, so you can see how leafy it is here in the summer. You can see through there, but this is where the Formula 2 used to be, I believe. There's the mast. As I say, these were transmitters and uh, that transmitted TV and radio all over Britain in the early part of the 20th century and uh, I imagine they're redundant now because it's all gone over to digital, the same as the GPO tower, all the dishes have come off. They used to have a lot of dishes on there which uh, pushed out the energy signals I believe. But uh, it's good that they look after these things because it's a relic of the past and once they're gone, they're gone forever. So up here let's hope we come into the actual Crystal Palace itself. Well this is uh, Crystal Palace Park and um, as you can see we're surrounded by these uh, famous dinosaurs from the, uh, I think around about the middle early part of the 19th century and a lot of these were brought here when um, Darwin returned on the HMS Beagle brought down, brought back um, skeletons and fossils of dinosaurs and this really was the jewel in the crown of Britain's uh, paleontological e effort and I say, there's a lot of conjecture around dinosaurs. They don't actually know what colour they were, and they don't know the size they were. Some of them, they say, were uh, on four legs, where they're actually now, with further evidence coming up, they were bipedals. And um, say, so dinosaurs technically around us still, with uh, what you see there, those creatures, the birds, they're living dinosaurs apparently, but uh, I don't know who ever know this, I'm sure. Some of them were, were uh, vegetarian, I think the majority were vegetarian from what I know and um, I believe the oxygen content at the time uh, was higher or they wouldn't be able to breathe in the um, atmosphere we've got on Earth today. And as I say, look at conjecture, I mean I doubt very much whether the average dinosaur's eyes and face look like that. <laughs> I mean it's quite unusual, look something out of a toy shop or something. And um, swamp dinosaurs, but I say the technology at the time middle of the 19th century this was quite uh, quite a feat and uh, you know you're looking at pre-Jurassic Park here when uh, before Jurassic 100 years or so before Jurassic Park came out and um, um, you know it was, this is the only part of the world where they had um, stone dinosaurs like this and uh, it's I thought I'd show, show it to you and I imagine there was a lot of ferns around in those days and swamps and uh, you are looking at, you know, 60 odd million years ago, is it, for the Jurassic Park, the Jurassic uh, time, that was the, uh, that's that. those things, they're Canadian geese. They're not, I don't think they're native, they migrated here. Some of these trees are quite old as well. Some of these rocks were brought here. And there's, there's dozens of them around this Crystal Palace, Palace Park. Ferocious looking creatures. Different types. And there is a uh, dinosaur association over here which uh, looks after these. Upgrades them now and again I believe. <laughs> You know, if you're looking at something that's getting on for 200 years old, I think they're doing quite well. 
And um, man was around in those days, but um, from what I think they suggest is that he, at the time we were just a little uh, like rat thing that used to run up and down the trees. And um, Earth wasn't different continents as it is today. Earth was, uh, I think, one massive continent called uh, Pangaea, I think it was called. And um, it, later the continental plates drifted and it changed. Uh, so say man was around, but you're looking at millennia, millennia bef before Homo sapiens and Homo sapiens sapiens, and uh, what preceded them, I think, was uh, uh, the Cro Magnons. At um, in the Ice Age, we had the Cro Magnon people, but. All the way from Peru or somewhere in South America. So there, there that's the original Crystal Palace and um, the footings just there. I think it was uh, built. Also, it was amazing glass structure. I mean, look at those steps. So getting onto the palace, Crystal Palace itself, what I'm showing you here is the uh, original footings of the palace and uh, you see up there as well and uh, we're going to go in for a closer look what's left of it. See that? Five years ago there was talk of uh, a Chinese company investing in uh, rebuilding the uh, Crystal Palace but it never came to fruition, or it hasn't done so far, but uh, it, it must have been incredible just walking around here a hundred years ago and uh, seeing this incredible glass structure there, the way it used to be. And we're going up there now and I'll show you some of the, you can still see some of the artifacts that are left there, that, what remains of them, but it must have been incredibly hot and uh, what I can't understand is this was all glass and to my knowledge glass doesn't burn it's not exactly so this is uh, I think what used to be the main uh, entrance to the Crystal Palace I mean they probably had a lot of royalty here and uh, famous people because I mean this country you know during the Victorian time was just so incredibly rich we were able to build all these piers around the country I mean South End's got the longest pier in the world and we could do all these things in those days just so incredibly wealthy. Beautiful sunset this evening. And uh, we're coming up to a flatter part and this is, uh, or was, the actual layout of Crystal Palace. Uh, what's left of it? So, you can see around it, this, this would have been all plants and Lord knows whatever else at the time and uh, that would have been the back wall over there and all around. And they've got these artifacts, these statues. It must have been a spectacular place. So where I'm walking now, up there, that would have been covered in glass, would have been actually sh enshrouded in glass. Uh, and to give you an idea of the intensity of the heat, I remember my grandfather telling me in, uh, in 1936, so they were living in a place called Newbury Park in Essex, and uh, you could see the flames coming from, uh, from way over in South London here when they were in, um, very, very high up here, see that? So yeah, he said he looked out, you're looking at pre-World War II, and he said he could see the flames of the Crystal Palace burning. And uh, I was saying, it must have been an absolute colossus, but 
What I've never understood is how it burnt, as I say, when there was when it was all glass. There must have been some sort of flammable, flammable component to it. Lord knows. Well, if they ever do rebuild it, uh, I'd like to come back. They were saying, saying there was a talk of a company building it a few years back. Statues. I imagine there's a lot, lot beneath the ground here as well that's just been left over the last hundred, well, getting on for a hundred years now. So uh, Crystal Palace was one of the highest points of London, which is why they put the transmitter there. And uh, it was originally in Hyde Park, apparently, and uh, uh, part of the Great Exhibition. And uh, they moved it here in the 1850s. Uh, and it was the entertainment centre of the area. You know, there was about 100 billion tables in here at the time. And uh, evidently you could get the sea air because it's so high here. And I'm told that all the uh, metal, that uh, the residue, um, I suppose a bit like you know the burnt metal from the World Trade Center in Staten Island um, was sold to Germany I mean kind of ironic really later when you think five years later six years seven years later um, that same metal may have been uh, melted down and used to bomb Britain um, with uh, Stuka dive bombers and um, V2 rockets and doodlebugs you know so strange world but whether they actually ever rebuild this place or not is yet to be seen. There's a museum here that's closed today, sadly, but uh, like anything as uh, a mammoth operation like that, it has to make its money back, I would imagine. They're not just going to go and do it. Like the Battersea Power Station, which is now almost a shopping centre. Well worth a visit. So this is uh, Sir Joseph Paxton's bust. Um, apparently original creator of the Crystal Palace which stood near this site from 1854 to 1936 and I think he was under the advisory of uh, the Natural History Museum, I don't know at the time but uh, clever guy but um, he died uh, quite a few years earlier so he never got to see his work go up in flames incredibly high up here Still one or two statues around, one here. Don't know who this guy is or was. That must have been hot in the 30s. And very sort of, um, elegant sort of design you know you've got these palatial sort of balconies where you could walk out and uh, I would imagine you'd be closer to the roof here but where we're looking now would have been all the Crystal Palace so here you can really see the beauty of this elegant building as it was in the early 30s tons and tons of glass uh, sadly all to end up so look at that I mean tons of the amount of craftsmanship that's gone into this building a uh, hundred years ago nearly 95 odd years ago and sad day when it burned down you can still see the ashes there about 1936 probably the morning after and um, inside as well very very beautiful elegant corridors with uh, plants and statues everywhere some still and from above as well as below just uh, an incredible building 
it's such a shame it's not still there. So there it is, that's the uh, Crystal Palace transmitter still there. Looks newer than it is, I mean, but that is actually uh, over a hundred years old. There's a similar one in uh, North London, the uh, Alexander Palace. This is the Crystal Palace. It's a shame that English Heritage or someone can't uh, put some money into it and rebuild it, but uh, oh, God knows how much that would cost if they were this Chinese company to... Uh, someone just mentioned a theory about why it burnt down. Someone said, very jokingly, a, uh, an insurance claim. <laughs> I doubt it very much. I don't even know who owned the original Crystal Palace. It's, I don't know, state, I suppose. A very majestic building, it must have been, that's for sure. Yeah, I just wonder, and they weren't short of uh, lions in British Empire. These are, I think it's called Sphinxes, based on the Pharaoh's tomb. They've got them at the other end as well. <laughs> <laughs>